As the the chair lady said, and did I say good afternoon to all? Forgive me. And as the chair lady said, Casper Claus has come to town. So yeah. yeah. And I want to first of all thank Almighty God for blessing me with this opportunity to be part of history once again with your team unity administration. We are making history in St. Kitts and Nevis. Just yesterday I met a school friend of mine. Someone I have not seen in many, many years, over 20 years. He is a division from Gingerland, and he always considered me a division from Newtown in St. Kitts. Together we began reminiscing on our school days, and for some reason he reminded me that he was part of that journey on that August Saturday via the MB Christina that never made it to Nevis from St. Kitts. He then reflected on the days when as a young division he had to come to St. Kitts as part of the sixth form to attend sixth form classes at the St. Kitts Nevis Grammar School. And our discussion advanced around the maritime or marine transport between St. Kitts and Nevis. But how many of us are aware that that fatal journey by the MV Cristino started at the old Treasury Pier just about 100 yards or more from here? The voyage of this government owned ferry began at that facility. The Treasury Pier back then accommodated the lighters that brought cargo and passengers from Nevis. Just after the 1970s, the ferry operations was then moved to what was called the Warehouse Pier. The Warehouse Pier was newly constructed back then and accommodated the discharging and loading of lighters and barges that anchored, or from vessels rather, that anchored in the Bastia Roadstead. Back then, St. Kitts and Nevis were called Lightridge Ports. And for your guidance, Lightrin or Lightridge in the St. Kitts Nevis context was the process of transferring cargo between vessels at Anchorage and the shoreside piers for eventual storage and subsequent delivery to various consignees. These operations continued at the warehouse pier for several decades. But as a result of the reclamation of some 25 acres of land, for the development of the new cruise pier complex, the warehouse pier soon became obsolete. The ferry operations were then transferred to the roll-on, roll-off ramp at the deep water port. And these operations prove very challenging uh, for the St. Christopher Air and Seaport Authority. This was so because in the shipping industry, it is well known, it is well documented, and very well accepted that the mix between passenger and cargo is a dangerous one. Additionally, it was difficult for passengers to find transportation from Borderock to Bassetil. So having considered all these factors, in 1996, Scasper 
constructed this, this, this ferry pier. And it was under the, in, the astute engineering guidance of the then director of public works, the late Mr. David Keith. The pier was built back then for approximately 60,000 EC dollars. The Carib Queen, the Sea Hustler, which substituted for the Carib Queen while on dry dock. We facilitated the accommodation of Sea Hustler by building a ramp to the end of the pier to accommodate that roll on, roll off vessel. Now, our intention as a management at Casper then was always to enclose this facility or the waiting area which should have been originally a terminal. But suffice to say, something went wrong and that never happened. So here we are today and I, as the minister, I am pleased. I am pleased to be part of this function today because the ferry service between St. Kitts and Nevis is so important for businesses, for schools, and for personal travel. Imagine what travel between St. Kitts and Nevis would it be like without these sorts of operations? Because this provides a link, a critical link, I should add, in the inter-island inter transportation structure, which serve more than 140,000 passengers annually. If we reflect on the statistic, statistics for 2013, this pier accommodated some 126,000 passengers between St. Kitts and Nevis. And just last year, the numbers grew and over 141,000 passengers plied between St. Kitts and Nevis using this facility. So one can see how important it is to have this facility. The need to establish an inter-island ferry service became evident in the 1960s to the then Bradshaw administration when the state invested in the appropriate vessel which operated between St. Kitts and Nevis on an average one trip per day. But this soon grew during the Simmons administration when that administration as well invested in a vessel to replace, to replace back then the Liamigo, the MB Liamigo. I don't know how many of us remember that vessel. But marine transportation is vital to St. Kitts and Nevis. And the frequent services and frequent scheduling at times back then created, and even now rather, created economic opportunities for island businesses and residents. Today, for those of us who travel between St. Kitts and Nevis, traveling on a ferry is like catching a bus to Sandy Point or catching a bus to Tabernacle. So frequent are the services. The ferry between the islands continue to enhance our inter-island connectivity, providing a day return services or several return services to and from St. Kitts. The ferry service continues to deliver additional passenger services, or passenger numbers rather, to both islands, resulting in an increased impact due to additional spending. It provides an improved offer of island hopping for visitors, and it also improves social, cultural, 
and sporty links between both islands. On behalf of the Team Unity Administration, the Ministry of Transport, and by extension, SCASPA, I therefore extend profound gratitude to the current operators, the operators of the MVC Hustler, the operators of the Carib Surf and Carib Queen, and the operators and owners of the, the, uh, the MV Carib Queen, if I said that before, the MV Carib Queen, the MV Carib Surf, and, 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 and also the MV uh, C Hustler. But given our maritime history in St. Kitts and Nevis, the safety of lives at sea is a paramount importance to our team unity administration and our Ministry of Transport. The Ministry, through its Department of Maritime Affairs, continues to carry out the objective of the SOLAS Convention and in the process ensures that amongst other specifications, that minimum standards for equipment and operation of the ferries are compatible with their safety. The journey between both islands begins, however, ashore. And that's the reason why we are here today. We are here today because we want to ensure that there is a quality experience at the start of that journey. And as you wait on your chosen ferry, you will wait in comfort and safety. This newly refurbished ferry terminal is nothing short of impressive. It is passenger focus or people centered. It is designed and built to provide the best in modern security. As the facilities manager said, it is air conditioned and the air conditioned environment will provide the kind of comfort never seen in this country and the ease of access for all passengers be they local and our visitors and for that i must thank my cabinet colleagues for really uh, concurring with going forward with this project we have waited on this facility for a long time a long long time and the next it is expected the next vessel is expected to depart at 1600 hours just about now so for that reason I want to invite and say nothing more I invite your excellency the governor general the honorable prime minister the honorable Vance Amory and I believe he's one of the most traveled uh, passengers through this ferry terminal but I want to invite also the chairman of the board and we'll all go forward and cut this ribbon signaling the opening of this brand new refurbished facility. I thank you. Stay up to date with news, programs and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter and watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.